Korea's followers. I'm Lee Hae Song of Korea's Focus. And hi there, I'm Chambo. Chambo, a new year, 2024 has begun. Woo! Holy time flies so fast! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Woo! Yeah, it feels like it was just yesterday when I first hosted Korea's Focus with you. We were talking about the 2023 Summit for Democracy held in Korea last year. And we were discussing how it was important to understand the effects of political polarization and the effect of social media. Do you remember our second episode as well? Of course! We were talking about the first Korea Pacific Islands Summit. And we were talking about how it's important to have awareness around climate change and how it's impacting a lot of our neighbor island nations. Did you know that both of those summits were part of Korea's efforts to implement the Indo-Pacific strategy? Yeah, it's interesting how everything that we were speaking about had this common thread of diplomacy to it. Mm -hmm. So the strategy for a free, peaceful and prosperous Indo-Pacific announced by the Korean government on December 28, 2022, just celebrated its first anniversary. Today, we're going to find out what this strategy is and why it is a continuous hot topic. Let's introduce our guest. Welcome! Welcome. Good to see you both. To see you. Uh, my name is Kuyan Chung. I'm Associate Professor at Kangwon National University. I usually work on uh, U.S. foreign policy, U.S.-China competitions, and Indo-Pacific regional security architecture. Professor, I've had the opportunity to introduce Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy a few times on Korea's Focus before, but I always wondered, why Indo-Pacific? I've heard Korea being mentioned in the context of the Korean Peninsula, Northeast Asia, East Asia, and Asia Pacific, but never the Indo-Pacific. So why did Korea decide to present the Indo-Pacific strategy? Well, the current Yoon Seok-yeol administration's Indo-Pacific strategy is the first comprehensive regional strategy uh, to realize the vision of, be of becoming global pivotal states, which attempted to uh, contribute to freedom, uh, peace, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific regions. And also it shows South Korea's willingness to expand its uh, diplomatic horizons uh, beyond Korean Peninsula, uh, match the expectations of international community so that we can play a bigger role in the regions. Chembo, have you ever heard about 3050 Club? I'm guessing it's got something to do with people in their 30s or their 50s. <laughs> their ages? Yeah, the age thing maybe. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, this 3050 Club refers to countries with their uh, GNI per capita uh, surpassing uh, $30,000 uh -huh. with over 50 million populations. Oh, so it was about income and population. Yeah, so it's kind of size of country and capability of the country. So Australia doesn't even go in there, right? Uh, not yet. Population's too low. South Korea became the seventh, uh, seventh country uh, oh. in the world to join this club in 2019. In 2021, the UN Conference on Trade and Development upgraded South Korea's status from developing country to developed country. Mm -hmm. South Korea's rapid growth has been analyzed being attributable to the benefit of these existing rule-based orders. So in that sense, we are trying to contribute to sustain these regional orders and so the other countries can have also uh, kind of enjoy the benefit of that uh, regional orders. Mm -hmm. So, Professor, the Indo-Pacific strategy, it seems to be a milestone in the history of Korean foreign policy. So that's why foreign policy research think tanks in other countries uh, call South Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy is a Copernican revolution, which means oh, that... God. So it means that South Korea has been undertaken a very huge paradigm shift in mm. terms of foreign policy. So it's a revolutionary policy that's right. for Korea. Yeah. So how about you? Can you summarize? Uh, what we have just learned. You want me to summarize the Indo-Pacific strategy? Okay, let me do it in one sentence. The Republic of Korea is an Indo-Pacific nation. Professor, I've heard that not only Korea, but also the United States, Japan, Australia, India, and Canada, as well as European countries such as UK, Germany, and France, are now announcing their own strategies to expand their involvement in the Indo-Pacific region. And why is that? Well, Hassan, have you ever heard about the saying that uh, whoever controls the Indian Ocean 
will dominate Asia. Mm. Or the phrase like, the destiny of the world will be decided on its waters. So these two statements actually indicate that this region of Indo-Pacific is geopolitically very important for countries' development as well as prosperity. So Indian Ocean, right below the Indian uh, territory, mm -hmm. is a home to a number of uh, choke points and a number of uh, geopolitically important areas such as Babel Mandeb, Hormuz, and Malacca Strait. And also it plays a very important role in global trade and transportation of energy resources. So you might heard about the, this term, the sea lanes of communications connecting Asia to uh, Middle East and Europe and beyond. That's why a number of countries are making the Pacific strategy. So Professor, I heard that the Pacific region is just as important as the Indian Ocean. That's right. Uh, you like seafood? I love seafood, okay. yes. Pacific Ocean is full of fishery. We have to protect them. And it's also full of deep sea minerals such as copper, cobalt, manganese, and platinum. And uh, those economic values are pretty important. In the Pacific region is home to 65% of entire world population. So this area is pretty important and also have a high potential, potential for South Korea's economic development. But the thing is that uh, militarized tension has been rising uh, these days between great powers. But there are many maritime territory disputes. Uh, this political conflict can become escalated uh, in any minute, actually. At the same time, we have many areas to cooperate global issues such as human rights, pandemics and climate change, uh, also supply chains, uh, especially about this uh, emerging technology such as artificial intelligence mm -hmm. or quantum computing or space technology as well. All of this issue makes a countries to cooperate more than ever. I guess that's why solidarity and cooperation among value sharing countries are becoming more crucial. Mm -hmm. It seems like there was hardly any episode where the Indo-Pacific strategy wasn't featured on Korea's focus last year. I guess this strategy just encompasses a comprehensive message. So Professor, can you give us a brief overview of Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy? So South Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy consists of nine priority areas based on the business of freedom peace and prosperity, and three principles of cooperation actually, inclusiveness, trust, and mutual benefit. Regionally, uh, it covers Northern Pacific and Southeast Asia and ASEAN countries in South Asia, Oceania, and African coast of Indian Ocean. So South Korea is really stepping up to uh, expand its uh, diplomatic horizon. So it's also important that the first uh, of the three principles of cooperation is inclusiveness, meaning that we are working with any countries that is aligned with our visions and interests and principle of cooperations. So Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy, it's not specifically targeting any countries, but it's not trying to exclude any countries either. Professor, it's been a year since Korea announced its Indo-Pacific strategy. On December 19th, the government held the Indo-Pacific Forum to mark the first anniversary of the Indo-Pacific strategy. It reviewed the implementation of and discussed the detailed action plan of the Indo-Pacific strategy. So, Professor, please tell us more about the forum. Well, uh, it was just a year, as you mentioned. Uh, it's much has been done, actually. For a year? Uh, yeah. Uh, strengthening regional engagement with Oceania and Southeast Asia and South Asia uh, with India. And actually, uh, with ASEAN countries, they announced this Korea ASEAN Solidarity Initiative, KASI, and establishment implementation plan as well. And also, we also held uh, this Korea Pacific Islands Summit uh, as well and explore areas of cooperation and strengthening military cooperation with the United States and Japan. And this trilateral cooperation is a very important platform we can actually build our uh, regional security architecture in the, in the Pacific so that we are uh, like uh, joining this AP4 uh, cooperation, Australia and New Zealand and Japan uh, to help uh, Ukraine crisis. And also we have other multilateral cooperation such as Korea, US, Australia, 
and Korea, US, Mongolia. So South Korea is actively contributing to the promotion of universal value uh, by co-hosting this uh, 2023 Summit for Democracy mm -hmm. and attending the NATO AP First Summit. And also South Korea increased official development assistance um, to the Indo-Pacific region. So ODA budget for this year, we are increasing huge amount of ODA for regional countries. So all of this happened in just one year, you would say? Yes, just one year. So it seems like it's just the beginning. So, Professor, what is the most important thing for Korea to do to well implement the Indo-Pacific strategy? Well, uh, we just uh, mentioned this long list of cooperation and accomplishment, but that means that we have communicated with other countries that long to reach that goals. So from now on, we have to still uh, keep communicating with our countries and also inter-department uh, within South Korea's governments seamlessly implement these strategies. And also there will be some unexpected challenges, like for instance, nobody actually expected uh, this Ukraine war. Nobody has expected this Israel-Hamas kind of conflict. Yeah. So that kind of thing can happen. So in that sense, it is more than ever important to you know, maintain this communication with other countries. On today's Korea's Focus, we talked about the importance of Indo-Pacific regions, the backdrop against which Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy was announced, what it means, and how it will be realized in the future. So, how was it today? You know, we've discussed so many topics over the last year, but it felt like we're hearing all of them combined into one episode, thanks to you, professors. As you mentioned, so this is just beginning of this uh, implementing strategy at this moment, but I hope South Korea can contribute more uh, to current regional orders and expand its role in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah, thank you for your insight and thank you for your precious time. I hope that cooperation among countries for a free, peaceful and prosperous Indo-Pacific region will continue in the future. So that's it for today's Korea's Focus and thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.